Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. In the past few weeks, we have seen the return of Roaring Kitty, the YouTube creator that in big part fueled the GameStop rally in 2021. Now, I've covered a little bit of that on the channel here and why that pertains to crypto. But for the most part, all Roaring Kitty has done since he came back over on Twitter is post memes and vague video edits um, over there on Twitter. Now, that was until this morning. This morning, Roaring Kitty returned for the first time in three years to YouTube for a uh, live stream. Now, I did tune in to the Roaring Kitty live, uh, live stream, and I just wanted to hop on here and give you guys my take on the entire thing. So the first thing of note is that Roaring Kitty had over 100,000 viewers tuned in about an hour before he was even due to go live. And the the comments, guys, was just, I mean, 20 or 30 comments every second. So you couldn't really follow or have any kind of meaningful uh, thing in the chats on, on that video by any means. But guys, the, the 100,000 viewers quickly jumped and shot over 500,000 the minute that he was supposed to go live. And you had all of mainstream media covering the event as well, which is pretty wild if you think about it. You know, I'm not sure we've ever seen mainstream media take a backseat to a YouTube channel. So maybe some history happening there, but. Um, the number dwindled a little bit as Roaring Kitty was about um, 25 minutes late to his own live stream, <laughs> but it quickly shot back up over 600, 650 viewers, uh, 650,000 viewers once he did start streaming. So Roaring Kitty came live and covered some things such as concerns that his Twitter account was hacked or wasn't actually him that was posting posting all those things over on Twitter. Um, he also went into some things with GameStop and their management. He drank beer um, and he brought up his trading portfolio on stream, which shows that he's all in on GameStop and GameStop call options, which actually happens to be about 350 50 million dollars all in on GameStop for this guy, guys. So that is pretty wild, pretty impressive, shows his conviction and his belief in GameStop. However, I, I question his belief in traditional finance and staying on Wall Street after, you know, what happened to him this last go around, you know, in 2021 and how badly they they really screwed him over. But the things that stood out to me most um, in in his live stream was that he was very cautious on what that he could say. He kept asking, can I do this? Can I can I say this? Can I post this? Um, and what he couldn't do, you know, um, there was one point where he was going to ask his magic eight ball as very much a joke. You know, Roaring Kitty has a, a big personality, a big, um, a big sense of humor. And he was going to ask his magic eight ball a question and then decided against it because he didn't know if that would be construed as investment advice. Now, guys, if you don't know, after the entire GME thing in 2021, he was investigated um, pretty, pretty extensively. The SEC went after him. I mean, his life changed forever after that. Now, the fact that he has to tiptoe on a YouTube channel just like mine, just like, you know, anybody else's is pretty insane. And it gets even more insane when you think about traditional finance and uh, mainstream media financial shows. You know, when was the last time 
that you were ever watching any kind of mainstream finance show like CNBC's Squawk Box or Jim Cramer, um, his Mad Money show that he's got going, where they had to be so careful about every little thing that they did and said about any stock. I mean, that's literally what Jim Cramer does, is he goes on his show and gives his opinion, tells people what stocks they should buy and what stocks they shouldn't buy. I mean, literally, this, this is exactly what Jim Cramer does. And yet, because non uh, this non-mainstream guy went on and did the same exact thing, and he rallied people against major hedge funds like Citadel and Melvin Capital in 2021, because of all of that, and because he isn't somebody that they control, Roaring Kitty has basically all but lost his free speech. I mean, it's it was pretty wild to watch on his on his stream, you know, just how how cautious he had to be. Now, this goes even further than just being cautious on what he had to say. I want to jump over to this article. Um, this is uh, from, I believe, CNBC. Uh, let me just jump over there. Now, earlier this week, Massachusetts Secretary of State started an investigation into Roaring Kitty's uh, GameStop stop trades, allegedly for insider trading. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the SEC isn't keeping a very tight watch on him as well. Uh, but it doesn't even stop here, guys. I mean, this happened just a few days ago, but this also just happened. And E-Trade is the platform that Roaring Kitty uses to trade his stocks. And it says that they may kick him off their platform. For what exactly? I mean, other than he's just this massive influencer that nobody controls. And so apparently they don't want him trading on their platform. Guys, that is, <laughs> that is insane. Um, but the point is, is that there is a huge double standard. And if you're not in the boys club, that's tradition that's called traditional finance and mainstream media, then you have a lot less rights on what you can do and can't say. Can can do and what you can't do and what you can and can't say, guys. It's you know, if you're not paid, bought and paid for by a major media outlet that they can, you know, kind of rein the reins in on you if you start saying something wrong that doesn't benefit the powers that be, you just, you have, you run the risk of these major government organizations and E-Trade and, you know, major institutions coming after you and you, you just face a lot of backlash if you're not Part of the mainstream traditional finance, right? So, and this is why this is all pertinent to cryptocurrency and decentralization. This is glaringly apparent uh, that traditional finance is so controlled and so rigged uh, to line the pockets of those in power. You know, you, you have to play by their rules. And their number one rule seems to be, you know, it's the, the unspoken rule of the road for them, that if, you know, they're the only ones that are allowed to make money. If somebody starts going against them making money, whoa, 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 that's not allowed. So this is why decentralized cryptocurrencies are so important. We can finally opt out of that traditional 
finance system that actively works against our best interests, against retailers' best interests, you know, the working class. And we can finally gain full control over what we can and can't do with our money. You know, it, this is a decentralized, permissionless system for the most part. You know, now there are centralized cryptocurrencies as well that you have to kind of weigh your risks with when you want to get into something like that. But Bitcoin, completely decentralized, permissionless, you absolutely have control. Now, granted, as long as you are off centralized exchanges, guys. So get your coins off of a, uh, centralized exchanges. I try to, to stress that whenever possible, but, you know, get off Coinbase, get off Robinhood and get your coins into your own wallets. And guys, if you, if you remember back, I did some reviews on some uh, hardware wallets that you, that can really protect you against all of this stuff. Um, and I really do recommend Tangem, which is one of the wallets that I recently got. And I did do a video on that. So guys get into it. And Tangem is super, super, super easy. You know, the setup for it was just, uh, you know, the user experience was definitely there. So I, I'm not paid for them by any means, but um, I do recommend them. And I do have a referral code in the descriptions of all my videos. So guys, if if you want 10% off, just go into the description of my video and uh, you can you can put that code in when you go over there and get your wallet and it brings it down 10%. So just something to mention. Um, but getting back to the Roaring Kitty thing, guys, it gets even worse, okay? Over the last few weeks since Roaring Kitty re-emerged on Twitter, GameStop stock has been constantly just halted several times, like 10 to like 60 or 70 times a day has been halted for trading on the NASDAQ. So just another layer of control that they do um, when things are getting out of control uh, for, I don't know who they're protecting, you know, that's the real big question you have to ask. But during Roaring Kitty's live stream, GME was halted 10 times during his live stream and has been halted 17 times throughout the day today. Now I'm gonna jump over to uh, the NASDAQ's page where they list all the halts, and you guys can see, um, you know, right here, GameStop, 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 Ga AMC, which is kind of related to the whole meme and GameStop movement. GameStop, uh, GameStop. I mean, it just, it just kept going. It goes, I mean, all the way down. I think the first trade, uh, not the first trade, the third trade that was halted this morning was GameStop. And it's just been GameStop all the way through all of today, guys, that it's just been constantly controlled. So, um, <laughs> Just kind of crazy to see. Um, now, the NASDAQ does these halts. You know, obviously, it's not just GameStop being halted. There were some others there, but they do this in the name of protecting investors. But you really have to ask yourself what investors, like who, who are they protecting here? Because given the nature of trading, you either benefit the buyers or you benefit the sellers, depending on the direction of the stock, that you know, which way it's going at the time of halt. So you're really benefiting either uh, one or the other, naturally. Um, and you're either working against the other side of investors, right? 
so you're you're protecting one side of the investing class i guess so the the entire of uh idea of trade halts to me is is pretty fishy and i think it it leads to a lot of market manipulation from the establishment which again guys this goes back to crypto and why decentralized uh cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance is so important guys we have the tools to actually opt out of that rigged game um so let me know in the comments what you guys think, what your thoughts are on everything Roaring Kitty and GME and the stock market. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Are you guys even invested in uh, traditional finance at all? I, I personally am not. I've never been um, invested or involved in anything GameStop other than I've shopped there before. I've bought some games there before. Um, but let me know what you guys think about that. Are you invested in GameStop? Let me know if you're invested in, uh, Wall Street at all, or if you're like me, like I've lost complete confidence in Wall Street and I don't, I don't play that anymore. Uh, you know, I have, uh, but I absolutely refuse to anymore. I just, I think it's completely rigged against us and I don't play it. So let me know what you guys are doing. I know a lot of people like cryptocurrencies. They like stocks as well. Um, you know, ETFs even play into this. So let me know what your thoughts are on Wall Street. Um, if you still have confidence over there, at what you're doing over there. And um, also make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Um, let me pop my little banner up here. Really helps me out, guys, if you like and subscribe. Really just goes a long ways to let me know, like, I'm doing an okay job over here. So if you liked anything in this video, go over and hit the thumbs up there. And also, guys, if you have not already, please go over to For Them Animal Sanctuary. These guys, I am kind of, uh, if you don't watch my channel often, every month I have a different animal sanctuary that I like to put in the, in the spotlight here on the channel and just try and help them raise some money to help out their uh, needy and abused animals that they, they take in. So guys, this is for them, Animal Sanctuary. Uh, go over, help them out. I do have this link. It's for them animal sanctuary.org. I do have that link in the description to this page. And then you can easily find the donate now button over there on their front page. You can also help them out on Patreon, social media, all of that, guys. Plus, they are a 501c nonprofit. So anything you donate over there goes to help you out in uh, when it comes to tax time. So go over help them out. And as always, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you for all the support, support for watching any of my videos. Um, it really is a honor that any of you guys take the time out of your day to listen to me. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.